Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and we are continuing with the Houdini Blender series. Today I wanted to look at how to make something like this here. It's a, it's a shot from The Witcher. I think it was season 1 episode, uh, the last episode. There were these worms from a box uh, that uh, infected people and uh, made them uh, like uh, fight their allies. I always wanted to do something like this but it always felt impossible in Blender. But uh, guess what? It is super, super easy to do in Houdini. Uh, let me show you my version. Uh, maybe let me put these side by side. Uh, I'll get my version here. Here is my version. So I rendered this out in in Blender. And I think it really came out well. Uh, the worms are animating. You can see each one is yeah, unique. And uh, it's like they have a, a brain. So you can see that this one is feels like he's really trying to get out of the box and then the others follow uh, similar to the what we have in the in in the witcher's version so i uh, can come here you can see the box opens up and you get some slugs so this is my setup you don't need all of these and uh, this is just me testing out different things and uh, just helping out anyone who might want to take Take a look at my project understand what the project does this is all that you need just to be clear this is not a comparison between houdini and blender it's just a showcase of efficient workflows if you want to create a scene like this it's really difficult to do in blender and it's also difficult to do in houdini so a combination of houdini and blender makes it super super easy adding houdini to your arsenal is going to really really increase your earning potential so let's get into this project and uh, let me explain what i'm doing here so yeah the first thing i did here was create the colliders and uh, you can see that uh, these are within some boundaries uh, let me show you that container uh, so that would be uh, this it's just a cube with another cube and made it raise up so the way i made it was just using a cube uh, i transformed that cube into something smaller and thinner and then used the booleans to boolean subtract so if i look at this and this you can see i'm subtracting uh this larger piece this smaller piece from this to make a container like this and uh, uh i created these outputs for one for this container and then one for this cutter here here i'm creating a grain simulation just to test out the concept to see if i can do the simulation by just adding dumping a few of these worms into a container and then using something to push them out like in the witcher version i started with something simple uh, that was just grains and i think we looked at grains in a previous video so here i'm creating some vellum grains which is just a bunch of spheres like this that can collide with each with each other and uh, here i'm just trying to add some constraints to make them attach to themselves but uh, it's not really necessary for this i added a vellum grow uh, to make them behave more like sun where they can break up into smaller clusters but it's not necessary for this this was just a simple test but uh, you can even just disable them uh, right away and uh, everything will still work so i added a vellum solver which is basically the simulation itself uh, you can see I also brought in the collider that we created, uh, but this time it's animated. And if I look at just that, uh, you can see I have uh, this cube uh, squashed and subdivided to make the collisions perform better and uh, transform it uh, to rise up like that. This is a different test object uh, that I was using to create different tests. Uh, to make sure that everything was working correctly before i started working on on the complicated stuff so the way you bring in the colliders is by this input here so you have the container and then uh, the collider rising from the bottom to push out whatever is inside and uh, then i brought that into the simulation let's go back to frame one so we have the grains push them out just like that so that's me testing out uh, the simulation here for the one I started with a spiral uh, it's a primitive similar to I think blender also has something like that yeah a curve spiral Houdini also has that but uh, you can also just use uh, a line instead and uh, I think maybe that's going to be easier to explain so uh, I resample it uh, let's come back here to, to show the number of vertices in this line so uh, this line has only two vertices I resample it to have uh, a little bit more and uh, 
So here I want to have two versions. I wanted to have an animated version and uh, a high poly version, but I think it's not even necessary to, to have two branches here. You can just have one and uh, you'll be fine. So what I'm doing here is just add some thickness to, to the curve here. And uh, I'm also rotating it. Basically, if you are working in Blender, it will basically just converting this to a mesh node and uh, using a profile like a, a curve with a smaller radius. I also twisted this around its length and it's called set uh, tilt. Basically, this is what I'll be showing in the course. Uh, basically, just showing you what we're doing in Houdini in terms of what Blender has. Here, you will use a spline parameter to twist this mesh. I'm just going to increase uh, the number of turns. Uh, so multiply this and uh, so basically, we are doing this in Houdini. Uh, but uh, Houdini has all of that in this uh, surface node. You set up the number of columns. Uh, you can set up the twists uh, by just using a slider here. So you don't have to set up extra nodes for that, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so if we switch this out for a spiral, you can see that uh, it's also getting the same treatment. I wanted this to be animated and uh, the way I did that was just... I used an attribute wrangler, but I'll show you what that is doing later here. So, so here I, I set up the curves surface similar to what uh, I'm doing here and uh, for the role uh, this role here you can animate it basically that's what I did to give the, the illusion of these slugs being alive if you have some bit of animation in the worms it will be transferred to the simulation in fact that's what we did when we are doing the slug animation I gave these a wave animation and uh, you can see this actually it really looks really ex well executed uh, by this are the worm so you animate the slug and then that's that animation can be transferred to the simulation as a force uh, so that's the slug for you there let's look at simulating just a single worm so the first thing i did was import it in here with the animation i scaled it down a bit and i think i moved it up just a bit and uh, so when you're setting up the simulation you have to set it up on a non-animated version that's why i have this time shift basically to freeze the animation on whatever frame I want. So if I want frame five, you can see this changes to frame five and uh, that is going to be our our non-animated version. I just want to use one. And these nodes here are just to set up uh, the mesh, prepare it for for the, for the simulation. I turn it into a tet conform. Basically this node just uh, remeshes the, the mesh, prepare it for uh, the tetrahedra constraint, which is a type of con constraint. I explained that when we are looking at the slugs. It basically just tries to keep the form of the mesh easily. I'll explain the settings better in more in the in the course that I'm working on. Uh, but uh, basically what you have to uh, look for mostly is this stiff stiffness. It's going to control how uh, squishy the, the slug looks. And then you have the vellum solver here. Uh, that is basically the system or the brains of our simulation. And uh, now I can play back uh, the simulation and you can see, you can even see that the, the slug is trying to animate itself, just giving it the illusion of being alive. All these other nodes, I didn't use them for the simulation. Uh, this was just a test for other things. So just look at this simulation ending here. And then we start on the simulation of the multiple uh, worms. The basics are simply just setting up a bunch of points and I'm using this object from from this container we set up here. So it's uh, this here is from this cube when we are creating uh, the uh, the box here. So uh, this cutter here is what I'm using here. So I bring it in, transform it, I turn it into points just like that. I didn't change the, their order. I just used the grid because I knew that uh, this is going to work very well. Uh, then uh, I transformed those points uh, or scaled them down and uh, added some attributes for orientation, just basically to allow for random rotation of the points. I uh, added a P scale attribute basically to also allow for random uh, scale and uh, then copied our geometry or our animated slug, this, uh, this one onto those points so you can see here i'm scaling it down so that we don't have any intersections uh, and like i said i have this attribute randomize to randomize uh, the rotation but uh, without it you don't get any random rotations and i also have the p scale uh, to randomize the scale so you can see without that uh, this random scale is not there so i can put that on and i can even change 
uh, the minimum scale so that we have a lot of variation. Uh, then I can bring back the P, the or random orientation to get the random orientation and just making sure that we don't have any intersecting pieces and uh, that's great. Now you might be wondering why I used a spiral worm instead of a line worm. Let me show you here. So here, if I switch out the line worm, you can see that first of all, it doesn't look very interesting and uh, the length of the worms is also going to be small. If you make it long, if you make the worms longer, they're likely going to intersect more, uh, but uh, I can have a very long worm without any intersection uh, as long as I have it in a spiral form. And uh, you can see uh, the unwinding they also unwind, which also creates a very interesting effect. So you can see they start out uh, like uh, spirals and uh, then uh, they unwind, which makes them really look amazing, I think. Uh, by the way, the simulation doesn't start right here. I cut it off. Uh, if you go to Blender, uh, you should see that my time starts at 20, but uh, actually it should be at uh, zero. So these... Uh, these all start up in the air like that, and then they are dropped. They are pushed up just like that. You can see how they try to unwind, uh, which makes uh, the effect look even better. So, yeah, you copy them to the point. But uh, remember, if you're working on a simulation, you don't want these to be animated. So I use a time shift to freeze the animation and I then use a tet conform. Uh, but uh, let me first reduce the point count to just speed up this. So I don't want that many. Let's just use a button maybe like, uh, yes. I use the tet conform to turn this into a mesh that this tet tetrahedra can use. So yeah, this is uh, the constraint setup. Uh, uh, these are struts. We don't even need those. And then uh, we run, we set up the solver. And uh, if I play back, we have uh, the worms, so the rest is, yeah. I remember the animation of the worms was removed using this time shift, so we have to bring it back to the simulation as a force. So if you double click on this node here, you can see I have a, a geometry wrangler here to set up the animation as a force, uh, basically with a few lines here. I think I'm going to, I'll explain this better in the in the coming course, but I'll, so the idea is, if you have two objects, two similar objects animated, for example, this has no animation and uh, we have another one with the animation here. So let's say this here and uh, it's rotating, jumping around. So let's say this is our animation, just like that. In the simulation, you can set it up so that this unanimated object tries to match the shape of this object. So uh, for example, these vertices here are the same vertices of here so it will just try to push these verses to this point uh, to this point here on every frame so as this is unmated so these verses go up here so then uh, Houdini creates a force trying to pull these verses from here to this position and uh, on another frame uh, this will go here so maybe this has now these verses are now here so this force will will get a pull to that position but uh, our animation was quite simple it was just simply as a, a rotation like this so the unanimated version of this would be we we'll try to match the animation of this the unanimated mesh will will get a force that tries to twist it as well so basically that's what we are setting up here with this uh, geometry wrangler so we have the froze, the mesh that is not animated, and then we have the animated, and uh, the force is basically uh, creating a force that targets the animated minus the frozen, creating a force from the animation. And uh, I set up a force strength. So if I increase that, go back to the simulation here, and actually let's let's look at this on the single on the single mesh. You can see as it tries to rotate. I can go into this and uh, look at the geometry wrangler and uh, increase the force strength, let's say to 10. Go back to the simulation. And you can see that now it's, try it's really trying to match the animation. Uh, but uh, remember, it's also incurring uh, the simulation forces like gravity 
uh, the tetra constraints and everything. So yeah, that's why you, different forces are fighting together uh, to create this animation. Uh, basically, that's what we are doing here, but uh, for a lot of worms. Again, all of this is not necessary. This VLAN pack is not necessary, but uh, I have this file catchy where I simulated everything and uh, you can see, yeah, we have those falling and colliding and piling up. Uh, so this point deform is, is uh, to transfer the animation uh, from the low resolution to the high uh, resolution, just like that. So if you have ever tried to do that uh, Witcher worm simulation, I, I think this is the best workflow you can, uh, I think this is a great workflow for you to follow. Uh, just simulate some worms in Houdini and uh, I really like how this worm came out. It's, it's like it's looking for something and yeah, they really have that feeling of being alive. And uh, yeah, so if you want to check out the project files, you can get them on my Patreon page and that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. And uh, don't forget to check out my Geometry Nodes course. A blender is not going anywhere. In fact, it's getting better. So you should pick up some Geometry Nodes as that is going to be a big part of Blender's future. And uh, I have a Master, Master Geometry Nodes course, which is go also going to be very, very uh, relevant for when we start looking at the Houdini course, because I'll, I'll be teaching Houdini in terms of Blender blender geometry nodes so check that out udemy is running right now uh, a discount i think so you can get the course at a discount and uh, that also helps out uh, the channel quite a bit so if you want to check that out links are going to be in the description see you in the next video thank you